fellow wrestling fans. Barry Horowitz, a.k.a. Mr. Technical, he's back. Back for another exciting wrestling stories from the road. And I gotta say, I gotta put myself over a little bit. I'm, I'm getting really jacked. I mean, 8.5% 8 bo 8 body fat, 235. You can't even see the traps because the hair is so long. I'm freaking jacked! By the way, I'm the first one to say that. But anyway, okay, enough of that. Let's get right into these stories, and then we'll talk about some really exciting stuff, if you know what I mean. I always say that because that's a Tim McGraw song, and you know I love country music. So if you ever see that song, I'm rambling, I know. I'm all jacked up, pre-workout. I've had a great workout, chest, shoulders, buys, half-hour conditioning. Okay, you don't care. Let's get into it. How about back in the late 80s, WWF, I'm traveling with a gentleman called, his name is Randy Colley. He also wrestled as Moondog, um, I don't know if it was the Moondog Moon or Moondog, there was Spot and there was another one. Uh, they're both deceased. And I was traveling with him and, I mean, he's okay to travel with, uh, I don't know, something, I don't know, something about him. Anyway, uh, we're in Seattle and we are got the rent-a-car. Something happened, because this is a long time ago, and I'm really trying to remember hard. But something happened with the rent-a-car or a cab or something. I don't know what happened, but we... First of all, I, I've been in Seattle before. In fact, I was just there a few months ago doing a seminar and a meet-and-greet. And, greet. and um, for my buddy JD, hey JD, shout out. And uh, anyway, um, it was a seedy part of Seattle. The hotel, everything. There's two parts to this story. It was just, I don't know. I never stayed there again. I stayed there closer to the airport. But anyway, so the cab or the um, the um, rental car, I don't know. It was an older guy, and he gives Randy a hard time. Randy puts the boots to him right there. We we're like in a in a, in a driveway. I, I I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to place this. It was a cab or to rent a car, but I mean the guy went down and Randy's kicking him, and he's got cowboy boots on, and the guy's like, oh, he's like hurting. I felt bad. I don't know what to do. Here I am. I'm new. This is like my first year. This is probably eighty eight, eighty nine. But here's the thing about this whole story. When Randy was kicking him, Randy Colley, remember Moondog? And by the way, when he was in the WWF, he was the original with Bill Eady, the uh, demolition. Okay, something happened. I don't know if he got ixnayed, fired, but Barry Darso took his place. He got pissed. He left there. He was going to sue. And anyway, he, um, I think they worked him as Randy Colley or moondog spot or or I don't know but it didn't pan out really good he was a strange individual and I'm not knocking the deceased but uh I don't know he's kind of a hater if you know what I'm saying on different issues but anyway that's neither here or there but when he's putting the boots to him it looked like he was working working kicks <laughs> and if you guys know what I mean I know you all my fans are smart and they look like working kicks. They didn't look like stiff shoot kicks. And, and But the guy was selling it. For real. I'll never forget that. And I, I we never discussed it. It was weird. Uh, that was a strange thing. Now, here's the, the, the second part of this story. So, I'm staying in a room that you could probably kick the door in. I mean, it wasn't that bad. But I think I was in the hood or something. But... I hear about two or three in the morning. I'm sleeping and I hear some girl screaming, let me in, let me in, up and down the hallways. I don't know if she wanted in my room or what, but I think it was a prostitute and she was ch chased by her Pia Zimp, if you know what I mean, the old Kia Zarn for the Smia's art, Mia's arcs. But anyway, <laughs> that's another story about the carny. So anyway, I'm not let I look out my window and this girl is latched onto the car or is she driving? And the dude, the Pia Zimp, is latched on like something you would see in a movie, like hanging and they're driving off. It's, it's, oh, it was crazy. 
It's like three, two, three in the morning, and I'm going, never stay in the Hiazud again. It was horrifying. Horrifying. That was a night to remember. <sighs> wow. So you got a double whammy, two birds for two, uh, yeah, two birds with one stone. Second story. Heh, this is good. This is really good. I'm in Memphis Coliseum wrestling for the famous, one of my favorite promoters, Jerry Jarrett, um, Rocky Johnson and Soul Train Jones. <laughs> we all know who that is, a.k.a. Virgil. And we all know the uh, Rocky Johnson's The Rock's dad. But I knew him way before then, Rocky, and I met Virgil only in Memphis, working for Jerry Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett was there. There was Dale Veazey was there, Paul Diamond. Um, this was for Mid-South, at the Mid-South famous Memphis Coliseum. It was pretty full. And I think we were the semi-main event. And it was Chick Donovan and Jack the Stretcher Hart against Rocky Johnson and Soul Train Jones for the Mid-South Tag Belts. We beat them. We got the belts. But here's the big deal about it. Somehow, I think I, I took the fall and I knocked Virgil out with the loaded glove that Jack Hart used to wear. And what does he do? Same thing that, that I told you about the story about a month ago. Tiger Conway Jr. jumps right up and no-sells it. He thinks he's smart by no-selling it. There's no sympathy, ruin the finish, everything. I think he was gone after that, too. I think, yeah, I think that was the end of Soul Train Jones for, for doing something like that. And me and Chick were the new Mid-South uh, um, mid uh, champ, uh, Tag Team Champions. I'm sorry. So, too many chair shots. Anyway, uh, my third story. My third story. This is pretty cool. Um, this is, uh, whew, I want to get this one right. Um, this is, wow. I went blank for a second. I'm sorry. And I'm being honest with you. Because I've got so many stories to tell you, and I think ahead, so I don't want to mess up anything and let the cat out of the bag. Um, oh, my God. Jeez. I forgot. I think this was... This was... Oh, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, this went back along. This went back to Crockett Promotions back in 83. And... Uh, yeah, I'm 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 let this this is one of these inside ones. These inside Rhea Zibs, if you know what I mean, Zine. Anyway, big show. Dory Funk Jr. is the booker back then. Uh I'm staying at the um Best Western where all the wrestlers would stay um at the airport. You could actually they're like studio apartments. Bugsy McGraw was my neighbor. Uh God, I think uh I'm going to do two in one, if you don't mind. I'm sorry, because I, I just remembered something else. So anyway, um, yeah, Roddy Piper stayed there. Bob Orton Jr., I think. I don't know if Terry Gibbs was there or not. Uh, God, Hercules Hernandez. Anyway, um, yeah. Now I'm getting, see? I did the two stories. Okay. Anyway, uh, Bugsy, Big Show, Dory Funk Jr. is the booker. Okay, I got it now, folks. Believe me. I know how to remember matches and spots, so don't even think about it. Um, anyway, so here's the deal. Bugsy says, hey, you, you're a big show. You need to, I'm going to give you this suit jacket. I said, okay. It didn't fit well, but it was nice. It was a big show at the, uh, I think this was Starcade or the Memphis, uh, not Memphis, but the, um, Charlotte Coliseum. Now remember, Dory Funk Jr. is the booker. And this is a bad rib. And it wasn't on me, but it, it's not cool of Bugsy. But I got that darn thing altered. It, it, you know, it was Dory's. And Dory's much bigger than me. Had it tapered and everything. Dory didn't put it over. But Bugsy took that from him, allegedly. He took his, 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 his sport coat. Sport coat. I don't know when he took it, when he when he did all this, but he took it and he gives it to me. That's that's a bad rib. And I'm new, so Dory knows it's he's not putting it over, and I don't think he was scared of Bugsy, because Dory could go. He's a friggin' machine. Him and Terry. 
And um, they thought it, he thought it was funny because I had it cut and altered. And really, it wasn't it wasn't cool. And I don't I don't forget these things. Um, and I don't even know what happened to the jacket. And I don't think anything was brought up by Dory. He didn't put it over. He's pretty smart. You can't prove it. So what are you going to do? You know what I mean? But very uncool rib. Ribs like that aren't cool. You, you could do friendly ribs, like just friendly. Not crapping in people's stuff or chaining stuff to the ceiling. Although Terry Taylor deserves it. But anyway, oh, did I say it out loud? Ooh, I didn't know. Ooh. Anyway, um, at the same time, Here's the second part of this. I got two for one again. So you're really getting like five stories here. Now, I was switching my room because I split a room with John Bonello. We were roommates. He's a great, good wrestler in, 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 uh, from Nova Scotia, uh, Canada. And he, he went back to Canada. So I got, instead of the two beds, one bed. So I'm going to have my room moved. So the door is like kind of open. I'm not there. So the maids could go in and out. Now, I don't know who did it. I'm not positive. I, I don't know if it was Orton Jr. or Piper. I think it was Piper. They're, they're, this is the rib on me. Okay. They go into this room with a fire extinguisher. You know, the kind that sprays the dust and the, the foam all over the place. Okay. I never find out about this until days later, weeks later. It wasn't my room. <laughs> the rib is on them. They sprayed the wrong room. I was out of there already. My room was moved. Could you imagine if my clothes and every that would have sucked. That so the rib was on them, and I don't think they've ever put it over. I didn't put it over. I was just happy my stuff didn't get messed up, and that was that was uh, that was. That was brutal. That was funny too. But again, it again nobody ever put it over, and that's the veterans. They don't put stuff over or sell or nothing, and I didn't either. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed those three stories. Uh, you know to check out after uh, check out the link uh, about cameo. I gotta tell you guys. I just want to tell you this real quick. We got our stories in. But thank you so much for supporting me on Cameo. You fans are awesome. I give you what you want. Keep it coming. Thank you, Pro Wrestling Tees and YouTube. I really appreciate it. And Facebook. And and I got to thank, if you noticed I'm wearing this shirt, Good Times Guaranteed Auction. I got to give a big shout out to my good buddy, not my cousin, a good buddy, Richie Sorrentino. Uh, we are co-owners of this auction, and I am the main sponsor and I don't tell too many people, but I wanted the fans to know it's every Wednesday. I think it's live at 6 o'clock. Check out Facebook. Richie Sorrentino runs it. He does a great job. I check in every now and then. Richie also handles my Facebook because I've been really busy lately and on the road. It's not that I don't want to talk to you guys, but I got a thousand things going. According to Richie, I get hundreds of emails and everything going on uh, every single day. So, uh... Yeah, I he, he takes care of it. He's a good guy. He runs the auction. And I'm going to tell you what else Richie does is credit. He will help you. You see this stuff on TV and the commercials. Uh, Richie will straighten out your credit if there's a problem. I guess with your credit cards, you'll have to get in touch with him. But I just got to give a shout out to the fans, to Cameo, Good Times Guaranteed, Richie Sorrentino, my good buddy. He helps me out. We're co-owners in a couple of projects. And soon to be wrestling... Uh, buddies or wrestling, um, uh, I forgot what they're, they're called, the, the uh, stuffers, I forgot, but you've seen them before, and uh, that's it. Um, I'm going to be heading out this weekend to Eldon, Missouri. I love it there for a meet and greet and a big seminar, so you guys are around, come see me and everything. I appreciate your support. I will be back next week with three more good stories. I won't get all baffled like that. I, I got to be honest with you, I've been at the gym, and I, I've been home a half hour, and fans come first, and I wanted to do this right away for you guys, so that's all, but like I said, I've got so much stories running from the 80s to right now, so, and then you get out one story, and you want to do another, because they're connected, and it's weird, so, so that's it, this is Barry Horowitz, signing out from Tampa Bay, a.k.a. 
Champa Bay, if you know what I'm saying. Go Bucks! I guarantee you, you beat the Bears Sunday. Oh yeah, I'm going to give you the big lucky pat on the back. This one is for all my fans, listeners, YouTubers, everybody. Pat yourself on the back and say, I'm the mofo man. I'm signing out till next week. Barry Horowitz, Mr. Technical, saying so long from the Sunshine State. Yeah! Peace out!